Hi, I'm Pete Meyer, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine. I'm here today at the Clearwater campus of the Pinellas Technical Education Center in Clearwater, Florida. This is the time of year that a lot of folks start complaining about lack of cabin heat or become worried about the freeze protection of their coolant or have other cooling system issues. All of that could be avoided if they would just have an annual inspection performed on the cooling system. And that's the topic of today's The Trainer. The cooling system is responsible for maintaining the engine temperature within a fairly narrow range. Water is a very good medium for heat exchange, but by itself cannot tolerate the demands that a modern engine places on it. A coolant, usually in a 50-50 mixture with water, is added to provide both freeze up and boil over protection. Every coolant has an inhibitor package as well to protect the system from corrosion and protect system components. Now over time, as people top off with water or add coolants that aren't designed for that particular vehicle, these factors can be affected and that's something we'll need to include when we inspect the cooling system. But first, let's start with a visual inspection. The first stop is the coolant recovery tank to check the level. The engineer operating temperature fluid level should be near the upper mark if it's cold, near the lower mark. If the recovery tank is substantially low or empty, and you have to ask yourself why. Coolant just doesn't disappear. There's got to be a reason. As you conduct the rest of your visual inspection, look for any signs of active leaks or corrosion stains that may indicate a leak that uh, only occurs under certain conditions. Don't forget there can also be internal leaks. So if that bottle was empty, take a moment to pop the oil fill cap in the dipstick and look for signs of intermix. Just be aware that you can have coolant loss by a head gasket that only occurs under certain conditions and you won't necessarily see that oil uh, contaminated from coolant. So don't rule that out as a possibility. Get, uh, get permission from your customer to continue your diagnosis so you can isolate the exact cause. Now let's see if we can access the coolant. First step is to make sure that the system is not under pressure. Grab one of the hoses and squeeze the line. If it's good and tight, then there's still pressure in the system. Never open a hot system. It could be badly burned or scalded. Wear eye protection just in case. Slowly remove the cap to release any residual pressure. Set it off to one side. Now the first step in checking a coolant's health is to check the concentration of coolant to water. It should be a 50 to 50 mix. Uh, it's important to have that, that mix correct to provide proper freeze uh, and boil over protection. But in addition, it's also going to make sure that the inhibitor package that's included in that coolant is sufficient to protect the system as well. If the concentration is low, so is that protection. Uh, the best way to check for concentration is with a tool called a refractometer. Now a refractometer is a tool that measures the ability of a liquid to bend light. And when you view through the eyepiece at a coolant sample, you'll see two divisions there, a, a light blue and then a white. And where those two meet is equivalent to the concentration of coolant in the system. Now to use the refractometer, we're just going to take a sample of the coolant. I prefer to use the radiator. I don't know if the customer's recently added water or a coolant of a different type or what. So I'm going to go to the radiator. 
I'm going to put a few drops on the viewing screen, flip over the lens, and then hold it up to an available light source. And I can see that the concentration of this coolant sample is at 52%, which is fine. If it's too high or too low, that's something that needs to be addressed. And I can use this tool to physically show the customer the need for that service. Another way of testing coolant concentration is the use of test strips. These are not as accurate as a refractometer, but can give you a quick idea of the condition of the coolant in the car. Uh, this one is made by Four Seasons and can test both conventional coolants and certain OAT organic acid technology coolants. Uh, other coolants may require different strips, so make sure you're using the right product for the coolant that you're servicing. To use these, the coolant should be between 50 degrees and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Take the strip, insert it into the coolant for approximately two seconds. Remove, shake off the excess, and then wait the time specified by the manufacturer. In our case, 40 seconds. The strips will react to the coolant, and you can then match them to the color coding on the bottom. If the coolant concentration level is correct, then the next step is to check the acidity of the coolant. This is an indicator of the inhibitor package, or more precisely, what's left of it that's present in the coolant. And while it's best to use an electronic pH meter for this test for real accuracy, the test strips that we just showed you can also be used as an indication. Now, if the concentration levels are incorrect, again, too little or too high, or the pH tests fail. Recommend a thorough flushing of the vehicle uh, to your customer. A drain and fill just won't do. On many late model cars, almost half of the coolant is trapped in the block, and simply draining the radiator and refilling it with fresh coolant will do you and your customer no good. High acidity levels can also result in a chemical electrolysis within the cooling system itself. Similar to a battery cell, this is where the dissimilar metals in the cooling system react using that high acid coolant uh, as a battery cell, and it actually creates a voltage potential. So now I have my digital multimeter with the negative lead connected to the negative battery post, and I'm going to insert my positive meter lead into the coolant. Just be sure not to touch anything metallic making this test. The meter is reading almost a quarter of a volt. That's pushing the limits of 0.3 volts that many experts recommend. So this is a good indication that this coolant has neared the end of its useful service life and should be flushed. Again, when flushing the cooling system, be sure to use a quality exchange machine that will recycle all of the old coolant out 
and fill the system entirely with new, fresh coolant. Electrolysis can occur chemically or it can be caused by bad vehicle grounds elsewhere in the vehicle's electrical system. To check for bad grounds causing electrolysis, leave your meter inserted as we showed you earlier. Start the car while the meter is on record and note the reading. During cranking, it should not exceed half a volt. While running with all the accessories turned on, 0.3 volts is the maximum you should see. Any reading over this indicates that you have a bad ground. Use voltage drop, basic diagnostic techniques to isolate that bad ground, repair it, and ensure the repair. Whatever method you've used to determine that the coolant is no longer serviceable, whether the concentration level is too little or too much, it's become too acidic because the uh, inhibitor packages are worn out, or because there's the presence of chemical electrolysis. You need to flush the system not only with the correct coolant, but good water. Tap water may have too many mineral or salt deposits to use in the coolant system. This uh, introduces what's called solid particulates, and these small little solids can lead to erosion of components like the water pump impeller. Distilled water is not always the best choice either. Some distilled waters will actually leach material from cooling system components, causing wear and damage that way. What is the best choice? The use of pre-diluted coolants that already have the water mixed in takes the water quality issue out of the equation. The only thing left then is to make sure that you've entirely flushed the system and replaced all that old coolant with brand new, fresh coolant. Cooling systems play an important role, and even with the advent of lifetime coolants, they still need to be checked annually to make sure that your customers don't suffer unneeded failures or have unnecessary expense. I want to take a moment to thank the folks at Four Seasons, Division of uh, Standard Motor Products, for their help in making this video. I also want to take a moment to thank Randy Dillman of Unique Training Solutions for his expertise and assistance. And of course, I want to thank the staff at Pinellas Technical Education Center in Clearwater, Florida Automotive Department for their help in making this video. That's going to do it for this edition of The Trainer. I'm Pete Meyer. Thanks for watching.